July 28, 1977, San Juan, Puerto Rico. New York diamond dealer Stephen Brooks visits the island on his annual business trip. He plans to meet a local jeweler to collect money from an earlier deal. He also wants to sell from the new inventory he's carrying $250,000 worth of quality stones. He's alone with no bodyguard. Brooks is scheduled to return home in two days. On July 29th, Puerto Rico police respond to the discovery of a body outside the city. It's an adult male shot with a 38 caliber gun, then burned severely. There's no driver's license, and because of the fire, a visual ID is impossible. Police find no other clues and bury the murder victim as a John Doe. Four months later, media coverage prompted by Brooks's family helps police realize it was the diamond dealer's body they found. The murder is part of an alarming trend. In the last few years, at least two other U.S. diamond merchants have been killed in Puerto Rico. Special Agent Fernando Candelario. We had transportation of uh, jewelry by individuals coming in from New York specifically. Uh, ended up in Puerto Rico. Uh, these individuals were kidnapped. Their bodies were found later on. Since the slayings have an interstate aspect, the FBI works with local police but no solid evidence points to any suspects. The agents would communicate with their counterparts at the police of Puerto Rico to see if the police of Puerto Rico had developed any leads. But with no leads reported, the cases grow cold. At the time, violent crime is common in San Juan, where poverty mixes with a surging cocaine trade and drug gangs rule the streets. Authorities have trouble sending the powerful gangsters to prison. In March 1979, one major gang leader under investigation for murder silences the only witness to that murder with a gunshot to the head. The gang leader's girlfriend, Jessica Trujillo, witnesses the killing and later agrees to help put the gangster away. Special Agent Jim Bird of the San Juan FBI. She was going to testify in the homicide case against the pretty well-known organized crime character there in, in San Juan. Um, th this girl, because they were aware of the danger, the threats against her, was kept in police custody. Jessica spends her days at the police station. And at night, homicide detectives drive her to her grandmother's house to sleep. The trial begins in May 1980, and prosecutors look forward to finally getting a guilty verdict against a major drug lord. But then, on the trial's fifth day, a body is discovered in a sugarcane field near San Juan. It's Jessica Trujillo, the only witness against the gang leader. An autopsy later reveals she was shot twice at point-blank range, execution style. And she was three months pregnant. The only evidence recovered, a Panama hat found near the body. The terrible murder shocks island residents, including San Juan FBI Special Agent D. Rosario. Jessica was very well known in the news media. It was well known that she was going to testify uh, against uh, this other individual whom she witnessed murder another man. And it was well known that Jessica was being protected by the police. The allegations were, at least the rumors initially were, that uh, since she had been in police protective custody, apparently she was murdered by uh, police officers. Suddenly, the unthinkable seems possible. The Puerto Rico Bureau of Special Investigation, known as NIE, works potential police corruption cases. They ask the FBI for help. It was a matter of trust. Whom do you trust? 
and the NIE thought it better to trust the FBI uh, than to go to the police department itself uh, and try to find someone there that they could really trust to conduct this investigation. FBI and NIE agents interview the detectives in the homicide division and are stunned when no one claims to remember who had custody of Jessica the day she was killed. No cooperation was obtained at all. None of the investigators were going to talk at all about this thing. It's an ominous turn. Agents get nothing but interference from police officers sworn to protect and serve. The strict code of silence frustrates FBI Special Agent Angelo Class. It was obvious from the outset that the police officers were somehow involved. Either they had given Jessica up to somebody or or they had uh, killed her themselves. Yet the truth remains elusive.